In this video, I demonstrate how to make a conical slab cup with four darts in the bottom, and it is a squared bottom. Off camera, I have previously rolled this clay, and now I'm just ribbing it to compress the surface to make it stronger. If you would like to see how I rolled the clay with the slab sticks and the rolling pin to stretch it and get it nice and even, um, just check out one of my other videos. I thought I would skip over that part. And uh, I'll put a link in the video description so you can see the basics of doing that rolling part. So this is a pattern that I made. I make a bunch of mylar patterns that I hang in my classroom for my kids to use. I will have a link to uh, a document that has a picture of this. Obviously this is bigger than eight and a half by 11, but uh, what I put on there will be eight and a half by 11, but you could blow it up or enlarge it um, to get the right size if you would like. Now, um, I'm going to cut this out. This same exact thing could be done just using a, a simple cone template. So like the way that I cut it here, I could quite simply um, cut it out like that and then use darts, but this has pre-cut darts for the kids. If you check in the video description, you will find a link to a Google Doc that is a live Google Doc where I have recommendations for my favorite tools, uh, tools that I use in particular videos. You can check that out if you would like to um, see some of the tools that I'm gonna be using. Uh, some of my favorites that I use over and over are, say, like these mud tool ribs. They are great little ribs. Um, I use them for hand building and throwing. Also, I would encourage you to follow me on Amazon. I have an Amazon influencer store where I have products linked directly there. Now, the way that this works is this is going to be made into a cone. And then these are bottom flaps, which are going to fold in. This is a cup size, but of course you can make this any size. You could make, you know, a teapot out of this if it were just probably a little bit larger. Now, when I put together slabs, I always will bevel the ends. The ends are beveled, so as it comes around, the ends are going to overlap on top of each other. If you do a butt end joint, it's not nearly as strong, so I always do a beveled end when I'm uh, connecting two ends of a slab. It will give you a much stronger joint and it's easier to blend and keep it from falling apart. So I score both edges and then I give it a nice dousing of slip there and then I'm ready to overlap and get these together. Now this is going to be the top edge of my cup. I just realized that I forgot to do one thing. Before I make this fully into a cup, I will thin out this upper edge. Of course, if I were going to be doing textures, I could have textured the slab before I put it together. In the case of this one, I just decided to go without textures, but for my students, if you're doing this, say for the textured slab set, you could certainly texture it first. Now that I've thinned that edge, so it's a little bit thinner than a quarter of an inch, I am just going to retrim that edge since I did kind of mess it up. Sorry, totally forgot about that. So this edge actually looks much more appropriate for a cup thickness now. And I'll add a little bit more slip since it's been sitting. Okay, 
I am going to stand this up as I put together this bevel. Again, if this were texture, I would be careful not to do too much blending here on the seam. But since it's not texture, I'm not terribly worried about that. Internally though, I will need to blend this seam and either make sure that you're pushing it from the outside or like I have it here, since I have it resting against the table, the table is adding a little bit of uh, resistance. So as I blend the interior, I'm pushing against the table. Okay, the next step is going to be, I'm going to make the bevels. So when I put this together, the flaps will rather meet up. And when I make these bevels, I'm going to take a little bit off of the inside corner of each. So I've beveled these really basically like I have a four walled pot and I was beveling the corners uh, to get them to go together. All right, now I have them beveled and scored and slipped. I'm going to bend this in. And just to speed this along, now I'm putting those bevels together, compressing them after they've been slipped and scored, making sure that the bottom looks squared up and even. Now I'm just wedging up some of my scrap to flatten out, um, again, about a quarter inch thick slab for the bottom, and then I'm going to rib that. I've rolled out a slab, I've ribbed it, now I'm just going to set this down, and it might make a mark. Yes, it made a mark right where I wanted it to show the bottom. And for trimming this, I'm going to trim it a little bit bigger. I'm going to just mark it first. I'll cut it, and I'm just angling in that bottom edge a little bit so it's not completely straight up and down. Because I'm going to be putting a bottom on this, and this has quite an angle, I'm going to try to knock that angle down a little bit to flatten this edge. So hopefully it will meet up with the slab a little bit more closely. I can always trim a little bit extra off on this base when the form is closer to leather hard. And here I have scored and slipped and now I'm going to put it on and I take a little roller to help really compress that seam together. It helps to really lock it together and then I'm sealing with a paintbrush, sealing with the edge of my finger to get it bonded. So when I originally cut the base, I did cut it a little bit bigger and then I beveled the edge. Now I'm taking this overhang and I'm just pushing that overhang up and rather sealing it. And to speed this along, I am just sealing that and now I'm rolling a little coil and I am going to put a coil in the bottom seam of the cup. I placed coils on the interior and blended those. And now one of the last things that I want to do is I want to kind of stretch out and belly out the form a little bit more. I'm just about at the limit. 
for the width of my hand. So I think I'll flare this out a little bit as well. That will help. All right, I flared out the rim a little bit, gave it a little bit of a belly, and now I'm going to allow it to stiffen up a little bit, and I am going to reduce the size of this foot. It's just a little bit big for me. I'm going to uh, just set it aside while I work on something else. I'm going to ha make a handle for this cup, and I've shown this in several different videos. Uh, this is a technique that I learned many years ago from Sandy Parentosi. She referred to it as the carrot slam, so I've used it with my students ever since. When kids have a hard time pulling a handle, this is a great way to kind of make a fake pulled handle. So I start off by making a carrot-shaped uh, coil, then I'm gonna smack that coil down and that flattens the back side so that's the side that's going to go against the inside of your fingers there now to shape this a little bit to shape this a little bit i'm going to use a damp sponge with a little bit of water and i kind of pull up now this particular cup doesn't have texture on it if it did have texture, what I could do is I would wipe all this slip off, dust it with cornstarch, and I could texture it to match the cup. All right, so then I bend the handle around, and for my students, I would have you put both the cup and the handle on either a plastic tray or a plastic bat, okay? You would position it down and kind of arch it around. And then when it's the same moisture as the cup, you'll be ready to attach. And I usually tell my students, make two or three, and then you'll use your best one. Now, I do want to go ahead and kind of tidy up this bottom. This is just a little bit bigger than I had intended it to be. Uh, there are different ways that I could do this. I could uh, rib it and you know just shave some off. I could uh, use a knife and cut some off. Um, I'm going to try a vegetable peeler. And here I'm just again tweaking and modifying the bottom, shaving off a little bit more because I wasn't too happy with the size of it, sealing it. I, that was a vegetable peeler that I was using there and then combination of ribs. And uh, now I'm taking off even a little bit more with one of the, I think it's a Dolan tool. Again, look in the Google Doc uh, in the video description for links to these sorts of tools. Um, I'm, I just keep shaving it off a little bit more until I get it closer to the size that I feel like is more appropriate for it. And I have that little mylar thing on the top because I didn't want the texture of the canvas on the rim. All right, I'm done uh, with the bottom. I have minimized it a little bit. Now I'm ready to work on the handle. When I do a handle, I will often hold it behind the form, like if I can kind of show you like that. I hold it behind so I can get an idea of how big, how long I'm going to uh, make it. I am going to be putting it on, let's see, I'm gonna put it on this side. So I'm a right-handed person, so the seam is going to be visible to uh, someone when they're away from me and I'm using it. And as I hold it here, I'm going to just quickly mark like where I feel like I might end up by cutting this. All right, so the handle is the same moisture as the cup. Now, as I have cut it, I uh, cut it at an angle here, and I need to make sure that it is straight right now. It's got a little bit of a crooked slant to it. There we go. And so here are my cuts. So it's going to go against the side of the pot. Okay, say something like that. 
Now you want to think about your handle being comfortable for your fingers and you want to think about it uh, looking aesthetically pleasing, like you don't want it to be too large, you don't want it to stick out too far, so it should be enough room to get your fingers plus a little bit of extra. You don't want your fingers pressed up against the cup. It could be quite hot, for instance, when you are uh, using it with maybe hot coffee or something like that in it. I'm going to be marking where it's going to go on the side of the cup. And again, the handle is the same moisture as the cup right now. I'm going to score both the handle and the cup. The biggest mistake that students make when they attach handles is that they don't have the handle and the cup the same moisture. It's very problematic if you have a handle that's a lot uh, wetter than the cup because if one of the two pieces has already started shrinking, they will pull apart when the other one begins shrinking. So as I stuck this on, I could maybe take and blend the underneath side, maybe the underneath side here. You could certainly use a wood tool for it. I'm just making sure that this is really embedded in there nicely. Then I'm going to tidy up this with a paintbrush. This is one of my favorite tools for blending in here, so I can blend with this. So I'm going to make a little thumb rest here. The thumb rest is so as I hold it, I can hook my thumb on that. The idea of a thumb rest is that it gives you a spot to hook, right? So I started off with baby, uh, like a kidney bean and then I squished it. You can see I kind of squished it and flattened it. Um, I have scored the two where they go together Add a little bit of slip. And then I usually put this right up at that bend in the upper part because that bend is gonna be where I'm going to be resting my thumb. I'm gonna blend this. So I am putting the blended part on the part that's going toward the cup because I want this part to be hooked up where I can hook my thumb into it. If you would like to put a pinky rest, you do the same thing, just a smaller version. And it will also be blended. It goes in the same direction actually. So it's just a smaller version placed down lower. Again, I'll do it right at that bend. And there we go, so that is my pinky rest. Now, before I finish, I need to just double check to see if I have distorted the rim. I need to make sure it's very, very round. And I know I've shown this in other videos, but one thing that you can do to uh, keep it round is you could use a round object like a, a funnel, a plastic cup, anything like that, that can help just make sure that you're round, perfectly round all the way around there. There we go. Okay. All right. And there's my cup. And I am going to allow this to dry very, very slowly. I'm going to put a bag hat over the rim and the handle. Um, maybe even put a, a towel over it so it goes nice and slow. And hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit more about how to make a conical slab cup with darts.